Hi, I'm Brian Crombie, and we're going to be talking on The Brian Crombie Show. We're going to be talking about politics, arts, business, and social issues on The Brian Crombie Show on Canada One TV. Good evening and welcome to the Brian Crombie Show on Canada One TV. I have the opportunity to come to you once a week and uh, bring you political people and business people and inspirational people. And tonight I'm going to bring you um, a very inspirational political guy, a gentleman that I had the privilege of interviewing on the stage at a uh, African or Friends of African uh, conference. And I was extremely impressed with him, his knowledge and his dedication. Uh, he's the NDP MPP for York Southwest and Faisal Hassan. Faisal. Thank you so much for joining us on The Brian Crombie Show. Thank you, Brian, for, uh, for having me, and thank you for inviting me to your show. Our pleasure. So how long have you been a MPP? I, have, I was elected uh, June 7th, uh, 2018, right. last general election, yes. And have you been in politics before then? Well, uh, not in an elected position, but I have been a, a political staffer, worked for former provincial member of parliament, and former a member of parliament. Okay. Yep. And uh, I was on a, I was moderating this panel on opportunities in Africa. Mm. Um, what's your association with Africa? Are you from Africa? Uh, indeed, yes. I was born in Africa, and I'm son of Africa. And came to Canada when? Oh, I came to Canada 30 years ago uh, via uh, Italy um, and then uh, to uh, the Paris in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Oh, really? Yes, a lovely city and lovely province. And what motivated you once you got to Toronto to get involved in politics? Well, I mean, I wasn't uh, involved in politics early on. Uh, when I was a student, I, you know, in Manitoba, I was um, uh, involved in um, uh, the issues of the student issues, you know, right. tuitions and um, ob other opportunities. And then uh, I really get involved. And then uh, when I graduated, then I moved uh, to Toronto. And um, I had a job with uh, Thomas Cook uh, at the time. And uh, my job ended. And I was about to go back. Um, uh, to, uh, to Winnipeg, uh, but then I saw an ad about uh, someone uh, uh, looking for to assist homelessness and those of risk of homelessness. Right. So when I was a 16, I experienced homelessness. Oh, did you? Yes, I have. And um, and I said, well, this is your opportunity, you know, to really impact and prevent homelessness. So it was a two, two about, it was two days a week, um, a job funded by the United Way for nonprofit agency, situated at Young and King at the time. Uh, no, so Davisville and Young, uh, that mm -hmm. was their headquarter. So they asked me to help these people and uh, I realized the first week it is uh, it required a full time. With the help of City of Toronto, they have funded the organization to work there as a full time, and we tried our best to prevent homelessness and those at risk of homelessness, and try to uh, fight on those issues, right. you know, head on. And from there, you know, I was uh, involved. Um, the professors of uh, uh, Professor Robert Murley of University of York University and other professors of Ryerson and in, in, in Toronto, who were doing studies about these issues of homelessness. They have organized the the homelessness conference for the first time, and I've uh, been uh, attending those conferences. Conferences. And then after, I was invited many forums um, talking about the issue of homelessness. homelessness. From there, you know, uh, that's how I got involved. And later on, um, I was uh, recruited to work as uh, my MPP in my riding to work uh, because uh, um, he, he had a lot of uh, housing issues right. at the time. And still we do at the moment. It's a real crisis in, in, at the moment in, in the city of Toronto and also in the GTA. Yeah. So I was hired to do as a um, uh, uh, staffer there, a constituency assistant, uh, dealing with cases and outreach work. Uh, and from there, he was elected in by-election February 2007. But in the general election in October 2007, he lost it. So then I really enjoyed uh, helping people and assisting, and he wanted to run again. So I get involved organizing, and everything uh, rest uh, has been history. So you've been a staffer, you've been a campaign manager, you've been a homeless activist, you've been homeless yourself. 
um, and uh, now you're the MPP. Yes, I am um, um, uh, the representative of the community of York Southwestern, and um, I thank them for uh, giving me the confidence and uh, um, uh, the trust uh, representing their voice uh, at the Ontario legislature. And, and do you have a critic position? Yes, so I'm, the, I'm the official opposition for youth engagement critic. Youth engagement? Indeed. And, and, and what are we doing to get youth more engaged? Well, I mean, uh, in a couple of ways. I mean, youth are, in our province are struggling. You know, as you know, uh, the youth unemployment is above provincial average in many ridings, especially in my riding and other ridings. And youth are struggling in terms of tuition. Schools are unaffordable. Mm -hmm. uh, they're struggling with jobs when they graduate. And one of the things we could engage them, engage them early on when they are in in uh, uh, schools to have activities, activities such as, you know, summer jobs. And when they're in university and colleges, we need to integrate work integrated learning where we provide paid internships right. and co-ops and placements because these are important because when they graduate, Brian, they are asked for experience. So and I it's was, very difficult to get a first job when you have no experience. Yeah. So yeah. I was the uh, founder and chair of something called the Mississauga Summit uh, back in 2000, 2008, 2009 when we had the uh, Great Recession. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and student employment went down dramatically and summer job placements went down dramatically. And it was fascinating because we did a bunch of research and we found out that if people didn't have those first jobs, mm -hmm. they were impacted negatively the rest of their career. The Correct. NPV of their future earning went down. Mm -hmm. And it was... It was the. It wasn't just the money they forego for that summer or for that you know year or two that they didn't have a job. What it was was the connections that they didn't make, mm -hmm. um, and the uh, experience that they didn't have, which made every other job they were going to get in the future more difficult mm -hmm. to get. And they always had to justify in their resume and in their interviews, you know, why they didn't weren't able to get a job. Yeah. And so it was an incredible negative. And so therefore, that first job it's very important ends up bro. being really important. Very much so. And I think if we could. I, have, I put also in fe last February, you know, uh, a motion to, at the legislature uh, about work integrated learning, which was passed uh, across party lines. But unfortunately, in the budget of April 11th, hasn't been included in that. And that was, I asked every year to create 27,000 uh, positions of internships, paid internships, co-ops and placements that gives young people an opportunity for that experience. Yep. And also, I've also said those who are unemployed or recent graduates also be included. So those who are school dropouts as well, that they be given opportunity for skill trades and opportunities to also get those uh, 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 skill trades opportunities being paid yep. to be trained and to bring our young people into we have to Brian integrate and inspire our young people no work in school yeah so, so let's talk tuition for a second you know yeah. it's always amazed me um, and you probably know this uh, far better than I but uh, that uh, free high school tuition was for, first put in place mm -hmm. really around World War two mainly right. because uh, uh, the Kaiser in uh, in Germany decided mm -hmm. that that was his way of placating the populace by giving you know kindergarten and then, and then elementary school and then high school for free. Um, up until that time, people would have to pay for mm -hmm. high school education. But it's never gone beyond that. And the last provincial government um, instituted uh, free tuition for people under a certain uh, income level. Uh, Bernie Sanders in the United States is talking about uh, free uh, education for everyone. Why don't we have free tuition? for everyone, for university, for colleges, community colleges, etc. Well, I think it's a wise thing to do to provide. For instance, for example, 60 years ago, uh, 1960s or 50s or 70s, if you have a high school uh, uh, a degree, it was easy to get a job that will really, you could retire the rest yeah. of your life. But not anymore. And, but remember, I mean, that was a high school education. It's time to lift that, and it was free from you know from from grade one to grade twelve because the idea was when you graduate from high school, you would land a good-paying job, and that's gone at the moment. So I think it makes sense to have a free tuition in high schools, uh, I mean in universities and colleges, because uh, now it requires more than one degree yep. to actually get a good paying jobs and I think we should include other advanced degrees as well because if we invest our young people is an investment that is actually it's worth more because if we have a highly educated workforce we are better off. So is that NDP policy free tuition? 
Well, I mean, uh, I mean, free tuition, uh, I believe, yes, free tuition is a good thing to do and is a wise thing to do because we have to put people first. Uh, and uh, you mentioned um, early on uh, with the previous government, uh, in my riding, as you know, uh, for the past 15 years, it has been uh, so much neglect. And it was from bad, uh, really, policies to simply say certain people uh, could uh, have a little bit of help, but the rest of the students cannot. Um, so having uh, a free tuition for everybody makes sense to me. Right. Yeah. Okay, well, that makes sense. Uh, we're going to take a break and come back. And I want to ask you about the balance of your education policies because I've been seeing a lot of posts on your Facebook page and Twitter and things like that about um, this, this strike that are going on right now. Indeed, so we're going to yes. take a break right now. We're going to come back and talk more about education in a minute. Thank you. Stay with us. So we're going to come back with uh, Fazal Hassan, the MPP for York Southwest, in just a minute. Buying or selling a residential or commercial property is one of the biggest financial decisions most people will make in their life. The real estate lawyers at Alam Law Chambers will guide you through the complete real estate laws to ensure your transaction completes on time and your dreams come true. Reliable and affordable Alam Law. to build this business. Now, how can I protect it from creditors and minimize estate taxes? My family depends on my income. What if critical illness, disability, or premature death happens to me? How will they survive? For over 18 years, Zahid Syed of Arush Financial has been giving business owners and professionals sound advice on tax reduction, life and health insurance, and estate planning strategies. Act now. I can help. Brentford Downtown में investment का एक शानदार मौका Laurel University Campus, Central Library से चंद कदम के फासले पर Condo pricing starting from $300,000 Booking with only $5,000 Easy extended deposit structure Minutes to highway Front of the water park दो साल की rental guarantee एक साल की free maintenance और साथ में free assignment clause Buy a condo and enter to win a brand new car To book a unit, call Adnan Shamsi at 416-788-7009 Or visit Grand Bell you do not have to wait to protect your dependents and plan your estate. Ado Law will help you take the appropriate steps. Having a will is the most important thing you can do for yourself and your dependents. Not only can a will legally protect your loved ones, it can also spell out exactly how you would like things handled after you have passed on. Ado Law, the legal professionals. Almi Tijarat ka naya markaz Gawadar Gawadar ka baayat maad idara New Vision Group aapko de mustakbil ki kiemti sarmaya kari ka sunheri moka Amerika or Canada mein rehte huye sarmaya kari or bhi asan Gawadar master plan ki ahem or kiemti location Gawadar ki markazi shahara or zero point per vaakya sahil e samandar se kareeb tereen 100-200-300 gaz ke rihaishi tijarati plot एक एकड़ दो एकड़ के इंडस्ट्रियल प्लॉट 
نہایت مناسب قیمت اور ماہانہ آسانی کے ساتھ میں ابھی اپنے پلاٹ بک کروائیں مزید معلومات کے لیے رابطہ فرمائیں ایئر ونگس ٹریول اینڈ ٹورز نارتھ امیرکا کی سب سے با اعتماد اور فاسٹسٹ ایئر ٹریول سروسز پچیس سال کا تجربہ لیے لا تعداد افورڈیبل ٹریول ڈیلز کے ساتھ ایکسلنس ان کسٹمر سروسز آن جسٹ ون فون کال یہ ہے ایئر ونگس ٹریول اینڈ ٹورز فار بکنگ کال ناؤ ون ایٹ فائیو فائیو ٹو فور سیون نائن فور سکس فور اور نائن او فائیو ٹو سیون ٹو ٹو تھری زیرو زیرو ایئر ونگس ٹریول اینڈ ٹورز GTA Real Estate Investments Pre-construction or resale Consult trusted realtors Get first access and incentives Contact Khalid Aziz or Mashud Khalid, 647-865-2949. Hi, I'm Brian Crombie, and we're going to be talking on The Brian Crombie Show. We're going to be talking about politics, arts, business, and social issues on The Brian Crombie Show on Canada One TV. Good evening. Welcome back to the Brian Crombie Show on Canada One TV. We're sitting t- tonight with Fazil Hassan, who is the MPP for York Southwest. And we've heard him talk about homelessness. We've heard him talk about uh, youth engagement. And we've heard him talk about tuition. And uh, Fazil, uh, I've uh, watched your Facebook uh, with interest uh, since uh, we met uh, a little while ago. And you've become very vocal about this current educational situation in Ontario. Tell me what you think about it. Well, I think education has been, uh, uh, public education has worked for us, as you know. We, um, um, we needed it because it's important to have a, a, a public education. And as you know, uh, recently, uh, the, this current government uh, has been uh, from bad uh, to worse. Uh, and uh, cuts to education, it hurt, it's hurting our young people and our communities. And that's why I think uh, what's happening, uh, current uh, education uh, situation and strikes, as, as you've witnessed, it's because of uh, the Ford government has cut, cut education. Yes. So let's talk about some of the issues, if we could. So, uh, you know, number one issue is uh, the, the number of pupils in a, in, a, in a classroom, the pupil-teacher ratio. Um, and how do you come down on that? Is the Ford position reasonable or is the teacher position reasonable? Well, it's not about a teacher uh, a position, as you know. Uh, 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 large sizes, is, it has been the experts have said, large sizes is not uh, a good idea. Uh, so making it larger and making it also um, a mandatory online uh, high school programs is, 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 is really hurting. Um, um, Why? Um, like in today's environment, you've got to become, you know, internet savvy. You've got to figure out how to work on the internet. I'm, you know, my corporate job, I'm on the internet, uh, if not half the day, probably half the day. Yeah, but, but Brian is about the uh, quality of education. Right. If the quality of education goes lower, and a lot of students um, uh, uh, like interactions one to one. They need to reach out the, um, uh, to uh, have a time and space. As you know, teachers have so many uh, availability for their time and the students. And instead of investing education, uh, this government, uh, for, uh, uh, government is cutting uh, 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 education. And that is not uh, sound. So they're cutting it through the the increased class size, which will allow fewer teachers to to serve. And so that's a few few, few teachers. And and your argument is that uh, forcing people, I think it's four classes, the four credits that you've supposed to get online, you would argue that that's uh, a cost-cutting method. Well, what I'm saying is that, um, yes, um, uh, if you mandate, I think uh, you have to consult with uh, the educators and the educate, educate, education workers and teachers and parents are saying that, you know, these are, um, um, uh, they're demanding that uh, these are not, uh, 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 they have to reverse these kinds of, right. of, of, of cuts um, because it is, it is really what you need if you're going to implement uh, a new kind of a mandatory 
are an e-education, we have to, uh, um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, it, it will lower the quality of education, and that's the concern of teachers so, and know, parents as well. I, I just, I, honestly, I don't buy that. Right? Yeah. Now, maybe it's the fact that it's mandatory rather than uh, exactly. an option. That's um, but, exactly. But, uh, the but mandatory, I, yeah. you know, I, I'm doing my part-time doctorate, and mm -hmm. some of the courses are online in my part-time doctorate. Mm -hmm. I went to Harvard Business School. Um, mm -hmm. Harvard Business School is now offering you know, business courses for MBAs But online. it's not a mandatory, right? Uh, yeah. No, there are some mandatory portions of it, no question. But this and, is high school you're talking about. Yeah. It's not a university, no, but I, you know, like, the difference they're going to come out of high school and they're going to be uh, told to do a whole bunch of stuff. But, um, but Brian, understand, the, the important of education is from grade 1 to grade 12. Yeah. And if we are not consulting the experts, the parents and the teachers, and just uh, these uh, uh, larger client sizes and mandatory uh, uh, online education, it will lower the quality of education. You think and so? that's the, well, I mean, um, this is the first time. You know, a lot of the private schools have been. a lot of online education. And, but the, we are and talking the, about the kids education. are the kids are taking it. But so, but, yeah. but people that are paying for it yeah. are paying for online education. But if we compare to uh, 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 private education to public education, public education, uh, not everybody can afford a yeah. private school, yeah. as, you, you know, as you indicated. But we want our public education to work for our uh, uh, communities and larger sizes and mandatory online educations will uh, probably Diminish, lower, lower, so? lower uh, okay. quality and, and so of what public about, education. What about the comment that the teachers are well paid, they have three months off, they've got 60 sick leave days or whatever it is. Um, so that's the argument that the conservatives are making, that uh, the teachers are unbelievably well compensated already. You don't buy it. Well, I mean, Brian, I mean, uh, teachers are professionals. They are putting more hours of uh, supporting these students. But this is about uh, the Ford government knows exactly the parents and the teachers and education workers want them to reverse those cuts. Yeah. Yeah. And w I mean, the idea of uh, dismantling our public education is wrong. I think what we need to do is invest. Yeah, well, I was invest. arguing before the break that we should have free tuition, so I agree with you on that, no question. And, and you know, the, the challenge that the Ford government's got is they've been, they were elected uh, to, uh, you know, if not balance the budget, at least reduce the deficit, they've got to find some cuts somewhere. Well, and I mean, uh, <laughs> education and health have got to be the places to find it. But Brian, they didn't even have a platform, yeah. you know, and I think um, um, what worked for our province is strengthening our education and our health care. And that is not um, 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 a sound, sound policy to simply um, uh, dismantle what is working for our province. Yeah, no, I agree education completely. and health care is an important. It's who we are. Well, and cancelling some, you know, we were going to have a university built in Brampton. Uh, that you. got cancelled. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, hospital wait times are at an outrageous From bad to worse, uh, level. Yeah. Uh, and as you may know, I'm chairman of something called Transit Alliance, a civic advocacy organization, the cancellation of the LRT in, in Hamilton. Yeah, it's a um, concern. Yeah, thank absolutely. God the LRT is going ahead in, mm. uh, in, uh, in Mississauga. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, the, the city of Montreal or a population of the city of Montreal is moving to the greater Toronto area in the next 10 years. And, and, and we've got to have better transit. Absolutely, I agree with you. And then, you know, I, I agree with you that homelessness is an issue. Oh, but yes. frankly, I think that even bigger, bigger, bigger issue is affordable housing. Yeah, affordable housing, uh, Brian, transit, you know, it's been for childcare, investing our uh, employment programs, and the future is important. But I think what this government is, uh, like the previous government, is from you know, uh, from bad to worse. They are not putting people's priorities and government should work for the people. So, so you got two and a half years left. Um, you're going to have another campaign. Uh, as you said, uh, Doug Ford won without really any kind of a platform. Yeah. Um, and so people were, you know, really voting against Kathleen Wynne and the Liberal government rather than voting for Doug Ford. But the sort of Donald Trump-like uh, uh, populist, uh, conservative, uh, um, reduce taxes, reduce the debt, reduce the deficit kind of attitude did play well with uh, the population, at least uh, you know, enough of the population that he got a majority government, which I was, I was surprised by. What are you and what are your party going to be able to say that's going to be able to change that uh, tune in two and a half years? Well, I think what, what, what it means is that the progressives uh, in this province have to be united so that they come under the NDP so that we have um, uh, uh, keep him in just one term. We have given an opportunity for 15 years, the Liberals, to really do the right things they expected them to do, and they have let us down again and again. And I think these coming two years, um, uh, what we need to do is to make sure that we keep this government just one term, and the alternative will be 
uh, the, the, the new Democratic Party to bring and fix the province from bad to worse and make it to better government that really tackles the important issues of our time. And so you think the issues are going to be uh, better education, potentially free university and college tuition, the, I mean, the, the, better transit, invest in transit, well, better and invest in uh, affordable housing and uh, and more investment in healthcare? Oh, well, I mean, the important thing will be uh, uh, affordability issues is important. Our environment, uh, Bryant, is very important. We haven't even talked about that. <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, we have, uh, we are not just opposed to the idea of the previous government, the current government, but we are also proposing ideas to bring the issues you talked about so to I make was, it better. I was shocked by this, what was it, $320 million cancellation of, of uh, green energy initiatives, mm -hmm. um, which were being funded by way of, yes, higher feed-in tariffs for the payment of the energy that they were buying, but it, it seemed like almost a, a, a free market, capital market, uh, almost conservative kind of strategy, to saying rather than giving grants, what we're going to do is just going to pay you enough that you'll actually build those windmills or build those, uh, um, you know, those uh, more green solutions. And they canceled them all. And if we don't have those kind of green energy, green technology uh, businesses uh, in Ontario underway, how are we ever going to get to alternative energy? Well, I mean, we have to have a government that understands the issue is important. As you know, the previous government, uh, which is, in my opinion, was from bad, and this current is, is really worse, uh, has, has no plan um, to make things better. And what we need is, for the first time, uh, people to realize and say we have given the opportunity this current government we see what they are and we have given the liberals for the past 15 years an opportunity right. to really make things better but let, they let us down isn't it time for a better government well, a government for that, that really tackles the important issues I, I won't agree with you that the prior government was bad but I will agree that the current government is worse and uh, I've uh, I've really enjoyed meeting you the few times that I've met and I'm following you uh, um, on social media all the time, and I'm sure that you're the kind of guy that we need in uh, in the legislature. Whether I agree with the whole party stand uh, or not, I uh, think Fazal Hassan, uh, the uh, NDP MPP for York Southwestern, is the kind of guy that we need in our legislature representing us and, and helping with homelessness and youth engagement and affordable housing and all those issues. So thank you very much thank for you. the service that you're providing to the constituents of U York Southwestern and the people of Ontario. Thank you, Brian. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And, and I got to say that one of the things that impressed me about this gentleman the most is he is an example of an immigrant to Canada who got unwillingly involved in issues and then involved in the political process and so therefore he's a great example for a lot of people in Mississauga where 57 percent of the people in Mississauga have only lived in Canada for less than 10 years and and some of them get involved but a lot of them don't and Fazal Hassan is an example that get involved you can make a difference so think about that thank you and Canada is the best country in the world Brian Crombie on the uh, Brian Crombie Show on Canada One TV. Thank you so much for joining us. Good night.